Congratulations. Thank you. Do you want to start by telling us kind of how you guys met and how, how the project came to be? Danielle! Don't Danielle! Please don't yell. Moira is here and her daughter Stephanie. Jessica. Whatever. You should really talk to her, you know? No. It's just a job. Hi. Hi, Hi Mom. I'm so sorry for your loss. No funny business with Maya. Thank you. You think everyone that's by is experimenting? You have zero gaydar. Excuse me, kid. I lived through New York in the 80s. My gaydar is strong as a ball. Is she okay? I already have a plan and a path, so. So you just study and uh, don't eat and go out with your beautiful friends. Is that it? It's based off a short film, um, and it was my final project in film school, and I met Rachel. Um, at the audition for it in a dorm basement. Um, and I'd seen her in a bunch of sketches and other student films, and then later learned that you were like skipping class in order to like meet every film student you could to like make all the connections you could. Um, and yeah, and then we did the short and it, it went really well. And Rachel is super ambitious and goal driven and, and organized. And she's, you were gonna say I'm, I'm a, a Virgo. Virgo. She's a Virgo. Um, and Everyone's like, oh, okay, how do we understand? <laughs> uh, and I think, yeah, with Rachel's like structuring of like, how are we gonna make this? Once I said I wanted to make it, she was like, how and when and what are your weekly goals? And let's take out your planner and figure this out for you. Um, that's helpful. So yeah, that that's how we met. And especially yeah. for for Jews, I feel like they go two ways. They're either like, I'm a mess, but I'm creative, or I'm like gonna get this done and I'm like not as creative. You feel like more of like the messy creative. <laughs> Rachel's creative. <laughs> um, I am a mess. No, I'm not organized at all. Um, no, Rachel still reviews my goals because um, she has one year, three year, and five year goals. And you used to carry them around Whoa. with you in your backpack. Yeah. You used to always have them printed. Yes. Um, but now you live in LA, so you don't run around with I a backpack. I don't carry but I don't go anywhere. <laughs> I stay in my house. Yeah. Where do the goals go? They're just, they sit on my, my, ta my table. <laughs> nice. I said table, so weird. But they sit <laughs> on my table, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. You, you brought up that you're a Virgo. Yes. Is the character a Virgo? No, I don't think so. I wrote what it was at one point. We wrote it down, but she's definitely not a Virgo. Um, she's probably like, I'm like, would she be like? I feel like she's like a Scorpio or yeah. something. Mm, yeah. Manipulative, right? Scorpio, Scorpios famously hate me, so like I have personal beef with Scorpios. Um. Okay, maybe she's a Libra or something or something. She's not a Libra, but I'm like, but I think Scorpio. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, I wonder if we would get along. Mm. Um, <laughs> so I I knew Rachel previously. I didn't know Emma, um, and then watching the film, I felt like I saw parts of you, Rachel, and then. I felt, even not knowing you, parts of you. Is that, like, how, how, where did you start and the character end, and where did Rachel, what did Rachel bring to the character that you might not have in your life, and so on? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question, because I think it evolved from the short to the feature, because um, we talked about, when I made the short, I feel like I really related to Danielle, and was sort of going through everything she was, and then, for the two years in between the short and feature, you know, our our path sort of went like this, where I sort of like mellowed out and, you know, didn't have that experience and had some perspective and was trying to write about it. And Rachel unfortunately had to go through her own version of of Danielle's like, you know, yeah, our, yeah. everybody's you know, yeah, you didn't have course. a you know, like a nervous breakdown in a day, but it was it was we, more drawn out. It was more drawn out. It was um, like as nervous slow breakdown burn. every day for like a year. <laughs> yes. For two years. Um so I think I I mean I think Rachel brought so much comedy to the short and improvised so much and just gave it a lot more like lightness. And I think originally it, it was still gonna be a, like a dramedy, but I, I think Transparent was like my big reference and I think it was gonna be darker. Um, and, and somehow Rachel was just able to make it so funny and yet so grounded. So I feel like it ended up being a, quite a combo of the two of us, but once it was in your hands, I remember I was trying to like revisit my old self and listen to the same music, like trying to get me in the zone, but it was like really like traumatizing me to like bring all that old stuff back. And Rachel was like, 
like, I, you know, I am an actor and uh, <laughs> I will do the trauma. You're like, I'm experiencing it right now. <laughs> just I'll hand it do to it. me. Hand it to me and I'll do it. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> um, I was like trying to think about themes in the movie. And I think you have a really distinct universe. I mean, so far as a filmmaker, I know this is your first feature, so you'll continue to expand on like what your thing is as you continue to move forward. But um, it almost had, it had such a specific um, thing for me that stood out. Like in a Nancy Myers universe, it's like the white woman in the kitchens. It's like she lives so solidly in that universe. And in the Emma Seligman universe, no one trusts each other. Like that stood out in a big way for me. I'm like, every character is, is distrustful of every other character and you kind of like see it in each scene and like you don't know that they know exactly what's wrong but everyone knows that something is wrong <laughs> would you do is that would you agree with my analysis i think that i just wrote from my perspective and so i didn't think about it in terms of who's trusting who but um i think that so often in chaotic families, everybody means well, but everybody's trying to get in there and, and is quite stressed about something maybe they don't need to be stressed about. But um, I definitely wanted, like, because it was a small space, and one day I was looking for as much irony as possible. So the more characters that could know something about one character, but we know the other characters don't know that person knows something, the, the better, I thought. Um, so I think that's where a lot of sort of the like mistrust came from because it, it was sort of all about hiding different things, mostly Rachel hiding different things, but then from different things for different people, and then once someone knows something, then they can't know. So I feel like that's where that kind of stuff came from. But I don't know, how many people like trust everybody in their family? Like, I, is yeah. that not normal? Like, do people trust people? Like. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, I guess I've never thought about it. Yeah, people, you know, some people are more trusting than others, I think. But I think it's, you know, it's uh, a good coping mechanism to be discerning with the people around you. Maybe we'll call it discernment. In discernment, your yeah. But I, I found it captivating. I was like, you know who knows what. Like, it's, it's good storytelling in the way that, like, you know that he knows what she knows or what she's told him and he doesn't know what she hasn't told him. But then there's this other layer of it that's like any anybody could be lying to anyone. Is, is like is that like a family thing for you or like we uh, let me transition the question to the family actually. Like cuz I think if if you were my daughter and I watched this I'd be like she fucking hates me. <laughs> um, so were you, was your family receptive? Did it make them think? Did it make them like, no? Uh, no, they were, <laughs> no, they're, they disowned me. No, my, they're super, super supportive. Um, I think that the, the d distrust or the lying, I think that all just comes from insecurities. And so I feel like every character in this um, has their own insecurities. And, and often I feel like when you're at, any sort of big social event, but often, at least in my family, because we have such a huge extended family with a lot of accomplished people in them, you're, you're trying to perform so much. And I think Danielle is, and her mom is, like maybe the only character that's not is her dad. But um, no, my parents are super supportive. They, my dad was in the short film, he played the dad, he played Fred's role. And then um, he had a line in the movie, he, he was the guy who had to use the bathroom. That was my dad. <laughs> So no, they're they're. Uh, is they, there a window open or an air freshener? Is that what he says? A, a fan. A fan. A fan. Yeah. There's a lot of a lot of people have to like go to the bathroom in the movie. <laughs> is that from personal experience? I think bathrooms can be an escape in this kind of thing. Yeah. I don't know. There was really nowhere these characters could go, so I was like, who can go to the bathroom? Who needs yeah. a cigarette? Like, we just need to move through, because people are just eating and talking and standing around, and it's not that exciting um, visually. So, yeah, there's a lot of bathroom time. I also feel like the bathroom is, like what you said, an escape, and I feel like any time I'm like at a place and I'm like in the bathroom, I'm like, who am I? Like. 
it's so, it's like you're at a bar, you're having fun with your friends and you're like in the mirror and you're like, do you believe in God? Like, it just goes there so quickly. And I feel like every time I was like in the bathroom, it's like, that was like the most intense scenes. Emma's like, you're having a panic attack. You're da -da -da -da. And it's like, you have to go to the bathroom to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you brought up God. Um, which I, I, I found, I find this in a lot of Jewish work and Jewish people that this is a very Jewish movie, I would say. You would agree? Um, uh, and there's very, very little talk about God. And the one time she kind of goes to religion or goes to God is when she's like at wit's end, when she starts kissing the, the uh, what do you call it, T Torah? Yeah, uh, I'm Jewish. Um, <laughs> but it's, it's almost uh, as like a last case scenario, like nothing has worked, let me turn to religion now, which is the whole, the whole reason that they're there is because of religion. But none of the old people are talking about God or religion. No one's like bringing it up. So yeah, can you talk about your relationship to, I guess, Judaism and religion and like how you incorporated it into the film? Yeah, for sure. Um, I grew up in a super reform community. So, you know, we never talked about God, but, um, and I feel like people in my family didn't, don't even, believe in God, some of them, um, but uh, I have a huge... Does he know? Does, d well... Just kidding. I, you know, <laughs> uh, uh, I'm going to skip that, but uh, I, uh, I think, you know, we had a really big extended family and a really big community, so at least in Toronto, um, I, I'm a fourth generation Toronto Ashkenazi Jew, so like all my family members are there and ex cousins and cousins and cousins, so every time we meet up, it's for a holiday or for a bat mitzvah or for a bris or a, a wedding and or a funeral or shiva. Um, so you, you just go to these things and, and it's tradition and it, you wouldn't even think twice about, like, of course your kid is gonna have a bat mitzvah and of course you're gonna have a Jewish wedding in all of the ways and invite all of your cousins and things like that. So that's just the way I grew up. And I think as I've gotten older, I've like tried to figure out the spiritual stuff, which my parents find weird. Um, they're like, it's so interesting that you're like interested in exploring like Jewish stuff in like your movies. And I'm like, we had the most <laughs> Jewish upbringing ever. Like, why is that weird? Um, yeah, but they, they want it to remain cultural yes, in a way. Yes. Yeah. I think a lot of, a lot of Jews are secular. It's like, I went to this, uh, Jewish thing retreat. And I remember there was probably like 60 people there and they like asked who believed in God. There were like two people there. And I was like, everyone here identifies as Jewish, but only two people believe in God. It was just interesting to me. And I, you know, I think it's also interesting in the film that like, I mean, every, even the smallest characters are like projecting so much on to everyone else, like all the old women talking about her weight and everything else, like, and they're not even really thinking about, the, you don't even really, do you ever know who died or how she died? Her name is, oh no, I don't, we don't know her name, no. But, but we know that <laughs> Abby, Silda, Abby, Abby, Abby sorry, yeah. God. Um, uh, the, the woman who, uh, Silda uh, is the actress, she plays like the host of the Shiva. Yeah. We know it's her mom. Yeah. Uh, maybe the audience doesn't know, but we, we knew that. Silda definitely knew. I think Silda knew. She got into yeah, character. That's like a cool comment on like the narcissism of everyone in the film in a way that you never, no one's talking about the dead girl. You know, woman, old lady. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, that that was that was interesting. Um, I don't have a question based on that, but we can go to another question. Uh, do you want to talk about uh, Pro projecting? And projecting, or like where? Yeah, like where you came to the character, or like things that you found in her, maybe things you learned about yourself through portraying her. Yeah. Well, I feel like I got like a very rare experience, which is like doing the short and then doing the feature two years later after like two really like difficult years of my life that like what Emma was saying, like I felt like I was like kind of learning the lessons that Danielle learns in like the course of a day. And I think I was able to find my way in through like anxiety. I'm like a very anxious person. Um, but I think 
I project my anxiety like outwards, kind of in like a like, are you mad? Like Danielle would never like check in. She's like, this bagel is good. Um, like, do you know what I mean? Like, I think so. It was kind of like me being like, what are our similarities and what are our differences and how the like feelings that we have project outwards and like Emma's such an amazing writer and director and like she kind of helped me chart this basically like this path for Danielle where it's like in every scene it's like one like what level of anxiety is she at because it's like it can't all be the same thing and so sometimes she'll be like it's a 10 okay down to a six now a four and an eight again um and like that was really helpful and then we also talked about like who has power in each scene because there's so much shifting power between like Danielle and Max and Maya and like the adults and everyone um and I feel like as a young woman you're just which is something I really relate to you want power and control and it feels like it's so often like ripped away from you or you think you have it and you don't um, and so I think that was really helpful as well. Cool. Nice. Um. <laughs> Me going, I, you, I'm <laughs> reaching for control. But like, you know what I mean? Where you're like, you think you're like standing on the ground and then it's like, whoosh, and you're like, never mind. Yeah, I mean, to me, the character was like, wanted something so badly wanted some like ground to walk on but yeah. like didn't had no concept of like what really she wanted or how to get it um which i think is something super relatable especially for the age she is she's around like what 24 or 25 okay. 20, that whole range though yeah yeah yeah, yeah. but yeah i felt i definitely like felt for her because i'm like you want this thing, it's not there. You have nowhere to grasp for, so you're just grasping at, you know, sex, at, at you know, relationships, at money, at family, and, like, nothing is really working. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you related, but also... Yeah. Like, anytime anyone says they relate, I'm like, thank you, but also, like, sorry. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. yeah. Um, no, it's cool. I mean, like, it's definitely, it, it was a, for me, it's a, it was a tough, tough movie to watch. Like, it's funny, obviously, and you're so funny, and the actors are all really funny, but it's a, it's, it's a tough one to, to sit through at times. I was thinking, like, also, I want to talk about the score, but, like, I think the score has a lot to do with the tension of it. I also think that if you ever do like a DVD release, you should do a version with just the Curb Your Enthusiasm music. I think like the movie could work on like just a completely different level. <laughs> it's like, I know you cheated. Anyway, um, yeah, so talk about like, <laughs> did, you have, did you have the concept for the score and the tension you wanted it to hold before going into shooting or was that, did that come after? I didn't, well, that's a great idea, so I appreciate it. Um, I've never worked with music at all before, so I wasn't picturing a score at all. I wanted to try to like just go for something super you know, realistic and, and not making the audience, like reminding them that they're in a movie by playing music. Um, and I wanted to sort of feel like a fly on the wall. And then when we were shooting the scene where Rachel is looking at the baby and the baby's like crying and we're getting a real like look at, I, I want him, Edgar was the actor, even though he's playing a girl, but we're getting a real good look at the baby for the first time. I realized that all the dialogue that I'd written with all the women around Rachel asking her like what she's doing with her life, I just realized all of that was gonna be background noise and that what's really happening is between her and the baby and that I was gonna need something to like communicate that. Um, and so then that's when I decided I wanna score, but I wasn't sure what I wanted until we got to that stage um, in post. Um, and then I wanted something, I decided I want something like string based because I wanted it to kind of be like Klezmer inspired. Um, and then I just kept saying to Ariel, uh, Ariel Marks, our incredible composer, I just kept saying I want it to be stressful, just, just stressful, stressful, stressful. And then eventually, you know, she was like, this is kind of like a horror score, what you're asking me for. Um, and, and we just sort of like went with it. But I was just worried that people weren't going to understand like what Danielle was feeling because 
she rarely gets the opportunity to talk about it with anybody. And there's so many other characters talking and so much going on. And I just wanted to make sure we were like in her head and, and nobody else's. Yeah, I feel like it really, really punctuated. Also, that baby, low key, kind of the mom was right. That baby's kind of ugly, <laughs> right? <laughs> I just, I was just like when I first saw the baby, I was like. Not no. Oh my god! <laughs> Did you know that baby? <laughs> we know that we know the baby, so we can't. It'll grow. Usually, ugly babies grow up to be really he's hot. So but cute. Like, now it, he's so cute. That, that baby was he's, pretty ugly. He, I think he's he's great. Uh, he was such. No, a he trooper. has a great personality. You can yeah. tell. <laughs> he seems really smart. <laughs> he uh, he and his mom did us. Uh, a huge favor because we didn't everyone who's working on the movie was like 23 and we were like does anyone know someone with a baby like who can find us a baby on the street um and so it was like our producers katie's friend or yeah. co old co-worker her baby and he, he was cry i just feel so bad we, he was in that hot van at the end and and dude that crying. we didn't we had the, no the baby was not harmed Sorry, but he was great <laughs> we, he was fine yeah he we was were okay. just pinching him really hard like. <laughs> literally what happened was diana was like carrying edgar around for honestly like four hours in stiletto heels like cooing to the baby being like we just have to connect i was like I cannot hold the baby. She was like, we just have to connect. She's like, la, la, la. Most beautiful voice I've ever heard. Because he couldn't stop crying, and he wasn't supposed to cry at all in the script. Yeah. And then he was, and then there was one scene where we needed him not to, and he, Diana was like, it's the mom. We, I need to be with him alone, away from the mom. And you're right. She was like, we have to connect. We need we to connect. To yeah. And then what happened was, like, on the last day, the mom revealed, like, if everyone kind of, like, sings wheels on the bus, like, everyone he's like kind of in trance. And so and then it's like the whole crew, the whole cast, like right before the take being like, wheels on the bus go round. Very like quiet and honestly chilling. Yeah. And then like, it's like the last person like fades out, action. Like so quiet. Whoa. And then we got at least one take where he didn't cry. But it was, that, that was the, that was really hard. I thought it added, the crying added so much to, especially the end. It's like, shut the fuck <laughs> up. There's nothing worse than like a baby's cry. It's like, why do they do that? You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, that, that's what I was thinking. But I, 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 I did feel like it added so much to to what everyone was was feeling inside because it does end on a, you know, it ends on a sweet moment with with uh, the two people connecting. But like everyone else is pretty unsettled, and I. I I felt like the, I thought it was intentional, so good on, good on that ugly baby. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> I'm gonna stop calling the baby ugly. Um, <laughs> it's a beautiful baby. Children are great. It ended um, up working out. <laughs> it worked, I was gonna say, I was on, when we were, when I, we were coming back from New York, there was a baby crying on my plane, and the mom was like, stop, you're being ridiculous. And it's like a newborn, and I was like, that is how I felt. Like, I, I, it is ridiculous. You're like, cut, seriously, enough. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Yeah. So it's interesting because I think it does like tr it like triggers Danielle in a whole other way. There's no way to be like I'm just not gonna look at the baby. It's like everyone is like, by the way, the baby keeps yeah. crying. Like yeah. it's like yeah. Yeah, they do that. They do that to make you feel worse <laughs> about your circumstances. Um, I think we'll probably wrap it up soon. But yeah, the the casting is so good, especially with the the older Jewish people. There's so many, and I feel like it, you shot in New York or around New York. I feel like at a certain point, if you're like watching shows, like you see every like older Jewish actor pop up in a couple of things. It's like, oh, it's outside on Broad City, whatever, like NYPD Blue, whatever. Um, but these were Jews I've never seen before. Um, tell me about the casting process. <laughs> Um, we had, uh, <laughs> I, well, I'm like, now some of them, I'm like, I wonder what, I went, never looked at their resumes much, but um, we had an amazing casting, geller, uh, casting director named Kate Geller, and she pulled from uh, m mostly the theater community, I guess, um, and Jewish actors she knew, um, and yeah, they populated the rest of the roles other than sort of the principal cast, which we just sent offers to, and the ones who said yes said yes. Um, uh, and they were in the movie and were such troopers. And um, 
just, it was so, like, it was definitely the lowest budget they've ever all worked on um, and the most uncomfortable they've been, but they were all very nice. Um, uh, but yeah, we, we had an amazing sort of ensemble of, of other um, Jewish actors who've been in like New York theater for so long and had so many stories like of, of all, like and they all like knew each other and they were like yeah. talking about like gossip from like 30 years ago like it was like fresh it was crazy it was like what is that what is that like um th it's like people go away in the summer to do plays it's called it's like stock. This, what is it what summer, is, stock. summer stock there was like summer stock talk gossip. And I was like, this is the like spiciest like yeah. gossip I've ever heard. Yeah. I also want to say that one of um, uh, the actors, Sandra James, uh, who plays Maureen, who's, who's sh shorter and has curly hair and, and is in the back seat with Rachel and um, uh -huh. uh, uh, Molly at the end. Unfortunately, uh, she, d she passed away a couple weeks ago. So I um, just wanted to honor her. She was so, so good. awesome and honestly yeah. the oldest one on set and like was always so like funny. just so funny and, and um, really sweet and had a dry sense of humor and yeah, she was just the best. So anyway, shout out to Sandra. Shout out to Sandra. Um, well, cool. It, do, is this the right timing? Do you guys want to go home or do you want to talk more? I don't know. Um, <laughs> who's going to, are you guys going to vote yes for this movie? <laughs> sure. Good. That's, that's what we like to hear. Young. Oh, wait, there's, there's one more question I wanted to ask. Um, if you, if you want to. Um, there's a lot of big, big kind of like issues in the movie. There's, you know, the, the sex work and there's the, the cheating and the bisexuality, but you never kind of like go too hard for any of them or make them the point, um, which I found to be quite refreshing and because so often you see these like issues talked about as like so head on and like we're going to like tackle sex work and, and like this stigma forever, but like this came to it from so many angles, not necessarily even all positive. Um, and so can you talk about like, was that a, a decision you made to kind of not fall back on the tropes of any one of the quote unquote like issues that were in the movie? Yeah, well, thank you. Um, I feel like we, we were trying to walk the line um, for a few of things. I think that at least when it comes to like seeing bisexual movies or queer movies, like I, and I think a lot of people feel this way no matter what their identity is. Like I'm tired of, of seeing movies where the conflict is about their identity um, and just want to see more stuff where they're just existing with that identity and the issue is about something else. Um, and I think that's how I sort of tried to approach her sexuality and the fact that she's a sex worker and you know, other things going on um, because like someone suggested like, why doesn't, you know, why, why shouldn't, what, what if it's revealed to the whole family that she's a sex worker and then she has to like, you know, defend herself and is like, this is what I love. And, and I was like, cause that's not really what the movie's about. And I, I um, yeah, I don't know. I think that I didn't want to make something that was like, being bi is amazing and being a sex worker is so fun and it's all great. But at the same time, I didn't want to make something that was like, being a sex worker is the most depressing, you know, sad thing in the world. And also being bi is a, a curse and no one will ever understand <laughs> I do, you. But and being bi is a curse, it by is the a, way. It is a curse, but, <laughs> but, but you we didn't want to address nuance. that really. New, yeah, show yeah. both. Yeah. I think it was like w w what we really were caring about was like not putting anything too hard on it. Like just being like the way that it is in real life. Like both all of those things like where it's like there's nuance and there's different layers and like also like for sex work, it's like she's clearly like one really specific example. And it's like, then we're not like, we're not making a blanket statement. We're being like, this is one example of someone doing sex work and what it's like. And like, um, yeah, I feel like that was imp uh, really important to us. I, I thought it uh, played very well. And I was, I was appreciative Thank of how you. it was portrayed. Um, do you want to quickly talk about like what you guys got going on next? Any, are you, you guys working on anything together? Anything separate? Are you guys still friends? Did you like have a huge falling out after this movie? Did it destroy your lives? 
Huge <laughs> beef. Um, our plans are to have dinner after this. Um, should do you want to say? Do you, we're working on. I'll say the thing, and then you say the log line because you do it really well. Um, we are working on this movie that we started writing actually after we finished the short film of Shiva Baby, um, and it's a very different tone. It's very like campy, horny out there comedy. Um, yes. Uh, we here we go. Here we go. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's She's gonna it's, say the log line. It's like a queer teen sex comedy. It's about like two nerdy queer girls who start an underground fight club at their high school to try to win over the cheerleaders from the football players. Um, uh, it's much more in Rachel's style of humor. And like when I talk about like Rachel pulling out the planner and being like, okay, so this is what you're gonna deliver to me for Shiva Baby each week. Each week we were also working on- I did stuff too, is what I, I no, mean. No, 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 being it was like, like, I was just like, send me the thing, you know. Every week we'd meet up and do something on Bottoms, which is this movie. And then also I, it would be give me a deadline to like show her something for Shiva. But yeah, so it's been a long time coming. So hopefully we get to make that next. Cool, it sounds great. And I hope to see it soon. Thank you for making this beautiful film. Thank you for doing that. Thank of you course. for doing this. Thank you, Thank audience, you so much for, for coming. watching Thank you for coming. this film. And yeah, um, I don't just like vote yes to everything <laughs> 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 regarding them. All right, bye. <laughs> <laughs>